Good evening, friends, and greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Here is some nice music for us to listen to while others join us on Facebook Live. Welcome to the midweek update. Just a few announcements. We will continue to worship virtually until further notice. So we'll meet Sunday at 11 o'clock on Facebook Live, and you can always watch it afterwards on Facebook or YouTube. Tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, we'll have our weekly um, Thursday night coffee house and bingo. Hope you can participate in that. If you want to do that, you can get the information on church chat. If you don't get church chat, please contact me or the church, and we'll give you the Zoom information so you can be a part of that. Uh, Paul Sims has put up the, our beautiful Stations of the Cross. They are in, on the glass windows in a, the atrium of the gathering space in our new building, Family Life Center. And the intention there is for you to be able to park in the parking lot and walk over under the covered area where the glass is there in between the two buildings and look at the Stations of the Cross and participate in walking by them and meditating and praying. It's intended to be something similar to our nature trail uh, but at the building with the Stations of the Cross. It is not intended to be a gathering space for a meeting or anything like that because we're still not doing that. But if you'd like to park sometime during the day and come by and do the Stations of the Cross, when the weather's good, probably not a good day to do it tomorrow, but uh, you're welcome to do that between now and Easter. And again, thanks to Paul and Corthy for putting those up for us. And uh, they're beautiful. We were very blessed to have those and, and for Paul to put those together for us. We have a lot of updates tonight. Please pray for Merle Crocker. Merle is very seriously ill with pancreatic cancer. And uh, pray for her and Mel. Prayers for Lisa Anthony, um, who is also fighting cancer. Prayers for artist Sandell, who is also fighting cancer. And uh, artists and Rebecca pass on this word to all those who have cancer. And I would like to add to that Brent Upton, who is fighting cancer, and Hal Harwood. And uh, artists and Rebecca Sandell pass on this word of encouragement to all of those with cancer and other serious health problems. They want us to remind us to have the childlike, a childlike faith that believes that God intends cancer and other things that are happening to us for our highest good. That God is not punishing us and God is not wasting our suffering. That with childlike faith we accept that God is working through whatever is happening to us for our highest good. So thank you for uh, for the word of wisdom from Artis and Rebecca. Let's continue to pray for Tommy Creech and Richard Stone who are in the hospital. Richard has taken a turn for the better. Uh, unexpectedly is doing much better. So thank you for your prayers. And uh, Nancy Jo is delighted and also very grateful for the prayers of her church family. Um, Please pray also for Gene Limley, Rick Limley's dad. Gene's dad is very sick uh, in the hospital. And uh, prayers for Gene and his wife, Jeannie, Rick's mother. And also prayers for Nancy Goss' nephew, Jerry, who has COVID and bronchitis and is very sick. 
We want to lift up others in our church who are recovering from surgery or facing tests in the near future or have other serious health problems. We don't want to forget them. And would also like for you to pray for Glenda, Reverend Glenda Johnson. I spoke to Glenda today. Glenda is not doing well at all, is facing some potentially very serious health problems, has some tests ahead of her. Um, as always, she was gracious and of great faith, and uh, she covets the prayers of her former church. So please pray for Glenda. Please pray for the people of Texas and the Deep South who have had winter weather unlike any they've seen in over 100 years. Still over a millions without power in Texas. So we pray for them. We pray for the people of northern and central North Carolina who are facing uh, an ice storm tonight. We're going to probably get a little bit of that um, over around Greensboro. And in that area, they're looking at a half inch of ice. That's down trees and power out for days. So we want to pray for them as well. And please be careful if you have to go out anytime tomorrow before noon, because the roads may potentially be very slick. For the devotion tonight, I want to share something from Reverend Brett Younger, who is the senior pastor at Plymouth Church in Brooklyn, New York, called I'm Fearing the Fear of Fear Itself. I thought it captured a lot of how we feel right now. The last year has not been good for much, but it has been great for fear. Fear is having a banner year. We have stayed afraid we will catch COVID. We are still processing the news that there are new strains, just when we were getting used to the old one. After being cautious for so long, how horrible would it feel to get it right now? Not only would we have a deadly disease, but we would have been careful for 10 months only to fail the final. We are afraid somebody we love will get sick, our parents or grandparents. Some keep calling their doctor to ask when the vaccinations will arrive because they don't know how to sign up online. We're afraid we're not even close to the end. There have been more than two and a half million deaths worldwide and almost 500,000 deaths in the United States. We're afraid of the threats that surround us. We watched an inauguration without a crowd. Barricades and razor wire surrounded the National Mall because we're afraid of each other. We look at other Americans now and see potential terrorists. We're afraid of the tensions that consume our government. Many are afraid of a racial reckoning that's been 400 years in the making. We're afraid of our financial situation. We're afraid of the emotional toll of the pandemic. This crisis has been hard on couples, on families, and on those who live alone. We worry about those dealing with mental illness. We're afraid of how the last year has affected children. Some of the children of the Great Depression worried about money their whole lives. Are the children of the pandemic going to worry about sickness their whole lives? We should be afraid that we will become frightened people. We're afraid to be close to others. What if we're still afraid a year from now? We need to be smart and careful about spreading this disease, and we need to be smart and careful about becoming people who are ruled by fear. For the last year, we've led limited, confined, and constrained lives. A tweeter who goes by the name Ugg writes, The one I miss the most is me, the old me, the cheerful me, the smiling me, the laughing me, the lively me, the me I used to be. What if a year from now we're still making every decision on the basis of what is safe? What if we don't make a friend for two years? What if we're afraid to give away any money that we might need? We could become so afraid that we never try anything. We could close ourselves off until we don't notice that we're controlled by fear. We could get used to being afraid. How are we going to be different at the end of this year? When we put the pandemic behind us, will we have learned to share more of what we've been given? Will we spend more of our time caring for others? This hard year could teach us to be brave in the face of problems, grateful to God for calming our fears and thankful for the hope beyond these difficult days. God makes saints in hard times. We learn courage on difficult days. The pandemic can teach us to be stronger. And then he offers this quote from Native American elders, and it's beautiful. There is a river flowing now very fast. It is so great and swift that there are those who will be afraid. They will try to hold on to the shore. They will feel they are being torn apart and they will suffer greatly. No, the river has a destination. The elders say we must let go of the shore, push off into the middle of the river, keep our eyes open and our heads above water. See who is in there with you and celebrate. Let us pray. Almighty God, our refuge and stronghold, we pray for the health and well-being of our great nation that all of those who are fearful or anxious or angry might be at peace and free from worry. 
We pray for the isolated and the housebound, that we might be more alert to their needs and care for them and their vulnerability. We pray for our homes and our families, our schools and our young people and those who work with them in all and any kind of need or distress. We pray for a blessing on our local communities, that our neighborhoods might become places of trust and friendship and not refuges of fear. We pray that they might be places where all are known and all are cared for. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good night, friends, and a better tomorrow. God bless.